and it's been very important to, to my career and to, to my goals, which have, have been to uh, help the community, to do what I can, and to move forward and to move us all forward. I am hoping that at some point, Senator Levin will see um, justice in uh, appointing me as a federal uh, judge for the Eastern District. And that would be a move from circuit court, and I'm hoping that you all let Senator Levin know it's our time. Uh, Judge LaPlata has been gone for quite a while. We have no uh, Latinos on the uh, federal bench in Michigan. We uh, also are uh, not getting the appointments that we probably should, and I'm hoping that if I do get the district court seat, then um, a uh, Hispanic will be appointed to my seat, which will then be open on the Wayne County Circuit Court bench. I'm a uh, judge uh, for criminal court right now, so mainly I try <coughs> cases that involve felonies, um, rapes, murders, and carjackings. But I have also volunteered to be a judge and have been chief judge in Wayne County for the drug court, where we look for alternatives to incarceration and support for our young people. Uh, we look to, to talk to them, to mentor them, to uh, encourage them, and to offer drug treatment for people who uh, are addicted to alcohol or drugs. Uh, I wish to proceed to federal court to uh, meet the challenges uh, that are before me and also to serve my community better. I know there are probably hundreds if not thousands of, of uh, lawyers and judges who are also interested in the federal district seat. I hope that uh, I will be one of the two that's selected on this round, but whether I am or not, I want you to please call on me. I've been involved with Edmanitas and, and, and Ben at Chaz and, and uh, been involved, but I want to continue. And if you know, we also invite schools to my courtroom anytime you want. We have uh, classes come in all the time. 804 Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, we give them a tour. My deputies um, are very experienced in showing them the jail cells to deter them and showing them all the, the lawyers and the judges and the uh, working people in our courtrooms to encourage them to keep on working towards their goals. So um, thank you so much again. Patricia Perez, Rosario, please let Senator Levy know. And I, and I think what, what Judge Prasar hit on is, is a couple of things. One, first and foremost, is that we have qualified, competent <coughs> individuals that can serve at the greatest, at the highest level. And in this case, her in or on the federal bench. Every year, every election cycle, Folks come knocking on our doors and saying, we want your help. We want your help to support this candidate or that candidate. And not always do we get a return. A return. And I would say a return on that investment, because that's what it is. We're investing in people that we are sending to represent us. But not often do we get that return. And I think that part of what, what she's sharing is that maybe it's about time that we begin to start cashing in some of those chips. Okay? Over the course of, of, of you know, the last 15 years here, at least, there's never been a Hispanic person that has been suggested or recommended to the federal court bench. And yet, at one time, there was a person there in George Black. He was there. He was a judge. I think that, that we need to do as an organization and in our respective communities back home is begin to ask that question. How can we support other individuals like Judge Prasad so that if we ever had to go before the bench, whether it's good or bad, that there's a person that's culturally sensitive to our needs in our community. And I think that, that not only Senator Levin needs to be embraced, but also Senator Stavner to share that we as a community are interested in partnering with her. In fact, the interesting thing about Senator Debbie Stavner 
is that she has a Latina, uh, Amanda Rutero, who is her chief of staff. And she is one of two Latinas in the U.S. Senate that are chiefs of staff. She used to work for Senator Feinstein. We have a natural power. The next step is, how do we utilize that? How do we begin to say, all right, we want to develop a working partnership, whether it's through an advisory group to Senator Stabenow, or whether it's on a regular basis communicating to her what the fault of our community is. And so, as, as, as you leave today, as you leave the caucus meeting, I'll ask you two things. One is, take a look at the back of, of um, the, the program. You'll see where we're going to be over the course of the next 12 months. You'll see that there's an email address and a phone number there. I would hope that as we get to those meetings, that I see you there, and that you bring another person. And if you're, you're from Warren, when we're in, in, in Pontiac, then maybe you grab two or three individuals to come over. Because I can tell you this, in terms of last year, when Gary Peters was going door to door, he had people from our caucus that looked like you and I, that were not in those doors, that were going out there doing everything they, everything they could to get him elected. The same was said down in, in, in Jackson and in Battle Creek where uh, Congressman uh, Mark Showers got elected, and many, many other places across the, the state. And I think that unless we begin as a community, and as individuals, quite frankly, hold our elected officials accountable. They're just going to see us as those two or three individuals that go to the meeting. But we all know that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Maybe every now and again we just have squeaky. So I, I thank all of you for coming out and, and being part of, of, of the 2009 uh, Democratic Party State Convention and of the Hispanic Caucus. I look forward to seeing you again. In the, in the near future, there's, uh, I think, some more uh, pastries in the back.